The story with Full Vestrand, if I can ask you about Dr. Robertson's very interesting presentation, because it seems historically <coughs> Full Vestrand was not adopted, even though it was actually quite efficacious. Can you spell out some of the background to this and sure. what, what he told us this morning? Yeah. Um, I helped to develop Full Vestrand in my own lab back in the 90s, and in our hands, in both uh, cell cultures and in animal models, Fulvestrand was the best anti-endocrine ther endocrine therapy that we had. Better than tamoxifen, better than depriving the cells of estrogen. Um, and then studies were started. First, comparing 125 milligram dose with 250 dose. The 125 milligram dose was ineffective, totally. The 250 was effective, and that was the dose that was chosen. But because it was only twice the 125, I was always skeptical, as were many other people that it still wasn't the highest dose that we could give or the optimal dose that we should be giving. So eventually studies were done looking at 500, which is clearly better. What the problem would happen, that happened was is that fulvestrant at, at the 250 dose was compared to other endocrine therapies. So you're taking a, a dose of fulvestrant that's not the optimal dose and comparing it with aromatase inhibitors and tamoxifen. And since it wasn't any better than those in those studies, it was sort of laid aside and used for advanced breast cancer, not in the adjuvant situation. Was that because it was injected rather than an oral sure. operation? Sure. You know, I think because it was a little bit more difficult to give, a monthly injection. Uh, the injection that most patients tolerated extremely well, that's not the issue, but it's just inconvenient to come in every month and get an injection. So tamoxifen and the aromatase inhibitors uh, remained as the standard of uh, uh, therapy for this group of women. And now it's full of strands been reserved to a second or third line therapy in women with metastatic disease. Uh, I think you could certainly argue that at the 500 milligram dose, we now wish there had been an adjuvant trial that may have turned out to be the best endocrine therapy we have. Right. Could you summarize what, in fact, we heard about the use of the 500 milligram today? dose today in terms of efficacy? Well, it shows a statistically significant improvement in progression-free survival and overall survival, something you hardly ever see in uh, metastatic breast cancer, much less in estrogen receptor positive metastatic breast cancer. So the, um, this is 500 milligrams of full strength compared to an aromatase inhibitor, Arimidex, which is one of the drugs that's considered the best drugs we have for endocrine therapy of breast cancer. Seems a big, a big difference too. So it, it is now looking better than anything else. Yes, I would say so. So what do you think doctors might make of this now? Well, you, you can't, ex it, it's really difficult to extrapolate from metastatic breast cancer to treatment in the adjuvant situation where you're treating for a long period of time, thousands of women, intramuscular injections every month, Without having data, that would, that would be a very difficult jump. I think what it tells us is that we'd like to have a study done for the adjuvant therapy of breast cancer using fulvestrant or another uh, selective estrogen receptor down regulator, if one comes along, that would be easier to give. There are a number of those that are uh, in research. It's going to be a while before we know. Um, I would like to see fulvestrant go forward personally because I think it's going to be hard to beat it. Uh, but I think this approach of getting rid of the estrogen receptor rather than just blocking it makes a lot of sense as a, a good therapy, perhaps the best we have for ER-positive breast cancer. In the light of what we were hearing, hearing at the recent ASCO, where there are publicly funded studies getting good results, do you think there's a case for putting Fulvestrand forward as a publicly funded large study? To I, I would like to see that. Um, you know, with the patent uh, life uh, expectancy, which is rather short now for full of a strand. I can't imagine the company spending millions and millions of dollars to do another large phase three adjuvant trial with 10 years of follow-up. Um, but uh, the differences were sizable enough that this could make a major difference in the adjuvant therapy where typically results are better. The differences are more uh, 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 ev evident in the adjuvant studies than they are in metastatic disease. So this could be a, a, a really big drug in the adjuvant setting. Whether that kind of study will ever be done, I don't know. Does it give you a clinical challenge about whether actually to go ahead and use it? Um, I wouldn't use it outside of more data. I think that's the, that's the problem. And it, it's, when you consider adjuvant therapy, you're talking about five years or maybe even longer of therapy. And to require people to come in every month for an intramuscular injection without any data in the adjuvant setting is a problem. 
So, uh, in a nutshell, what, how would you sum up that study right now? Well, I think around yeah, the world? that and, and other studies suggest that 500 milligrams of fulvastrant may be the best endocrine therapy we have, for at least for metastatic breast cancer, and I think it should, probably should be used a little more frequently than it is.